True uh, is basically, I'm going to let him let you guys know when he gets here, but he is in the building. So I want to welcome, if you will, True to LA Key in the afternoon. Yes. I'm excited. Up, yes. How you doing? Yes. Hi, True. So for those who don't know, can you tell them your name and exactly what it is that you do? My name is Adrian True Toscano. I put the true in the, in the middle. I changed my name. My name is now true with no E. So T-R-U. <laughs> That's what's unique. I saw that too. And um, and what is it exactly that it is that you do? Because I want you to let the, them know. I'm a film know. director, producer, um, and I also edit the movies as well that I shoot. So I, I actually edit. I'm a, I put the money up for the films. I executive produce the films. I direct them. I used to shoot them, but now I have a cameraman. But I do all of the jobs. Excellent. But for the most part, like, excuse me, so my last two films, mm -hmm. I did the, uh, the executive producing, mm -hmm. which means I put the money up. Gotcha. <laughs> so uh -huh. the, the executive producing, the directing, and the editing. Okay. And you said you also are a, a, a DP. Yes. Okay. Excellent. So you basically, you know, wear many hats. Yes. No limits. No limits. I, I commend but you I don't on do that. Them, I don't do them all at the same time. But you're still I, I, I separate playing. the jobs. Yeah. But I come from a one-man band, so that's why I know how to do pretty much everything. I love that. We're going to get into that. We're going to definitely get into that. I got to ask you, uh, you, when you said your name, True, and you let the audience know just now, no E. No um, e. Very unique. What what gave you that that name? Uh, My wife gave me that name. Oh, excellent. She said, you're so real. Your name should be True. Oh, and wow. And I'm like, you know what? All right, cool. Let's I go with it. I love that. And then that. after that, True Light Films came. And you even named your entertainment company True Life. True, True Light. True Light. Yes, because light is the most important part to filmmaking. Yes. To me. No, it to is. me too. Yeah, a, a lot so. of people don't know that. Lighting. So how is the lighting here? What do you Lighting is good. Lighting, lighting is, is good. good. I, 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 yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, that's so important. <laughs> yeah. I don't know when people don't recognize the importance of lighting until they're working in film, right? Oh, no. The camera can't see without light. Without light. Meaning, and, like, at all. Like, and, if there was no light on, it would just be dark. And you know, one, another thing in production is that if the lighting isn't right, can a, a talent look like something completely different than what they that Absolutely. they are Absolutely. with that lighting not set in? Absolutely. So those stand-ins are extremely important, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, to capture that. So, True, let's get into your story and your journey. So um, I asked you um, just briefly, like, earlier before the show, like, where you're from. Mm -hmm. Can you let those who don't know know where you're from? Brooklyn Give in it the up to building. Brooklyn. <laughs> yes. The whole Brooklyn, though. I can't really say I'm from anywhere but I am from Park Slope, Crown Heights, and Best Star and Marcy Project. That's what that's what <laughs> I, that's my that's why I rode my bike through all those neighborhoods, getting off in different parks, playing in different tournaments, and that's where I that's where I was at. Oh, that's incredible! And so, when did your your inspiration for film and production begin? <sighs> all right, so all right, hip hop really. Okay. So I, my brother raps. I don't know if you know my brother, but my brother's name Who's is Ma brother? Matty Tosca. Okay. Um, he got a song with Billy Arms and stuff like oh, that. Oh, nice, so, nice. Uh, he's a pretty prominent rapper. He got songs with Ashanti and Jim Jones and T Pain and things like that. Excellent. Um, so doing that, managing him and being with him. Oh, you I, were his I, manager. I was his manager. Okay. So doing that stuff with him and. Uh, he needed a lot of videos and photos, and mm -hmm. we, I was, we would pay for them. Mm -hmm. But then after like a decade, it was like, all right, well, let me buy a camera and we just start doing it. So mm -hmm. I started that way, but I didn't fall in love with it yet. I didn't. I, I, it was just something that we did, mm -hmm. and I, I would take his photos and do little videos, and and then shout out to Seth Allah. He came out of nowhere and was like, "Yo, I, how much it costs for one of those videos?" And really? I'm, I'm like, "One of what videos?" Wow. And he's like, the videos you be doing with your brother. <laughs> like, I, I, I need one of those. Okay. I'm like, all right, cool. Let's do it. He's like, I'm going to pay you. I'm like, pay me? Really? Like, getting money for it wasn't even a thought. I wasn't even thinking about getting no money. Wow. Like, I was I, I, getting money for that wasn't even a thing I was thinking about. So wow. He, he, so, he, so that, Seth, um, and shout out to Seth. Seth shout I, out my boy. Yeah, shout him out. I don't know, did he tell you that he? I met him? Yes, like, he did. He did. Yeah, I met him years ago. He was, he's like, I've known of him and met him in 20, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But quickly say, so Seth is the one that got you to, like, say, outside of family, I'm going to shoot someone, and this is going to be my first paid gig. He was the first person 
to ever put a dollar in my pocket to shoot his music video. Wow. So he I, the was only impressed. person I had shot before that was my brother. Wow. That's the only person I ever shot. Clearly was impressed by the work though because he that's liked what it. and it sucked. So at shout that out, time. So shout out to Seth for giving me a shot because wow. I, I, I truly sucked at that time at filmmaking. And yes. so what happens next after that? So okay, you shoot. After, I Seth. still I'm still not thinking about it like you that. You haven't fell in love yet. I, I haven't thought about it like, oh, this is what I'm going to be doing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. No. Mm -hmm. I'm still just doing it just for him. I took the, the $500. I was grateful for it. Wow. And um, from there, uh, a couple years went by. The music kind of faded out. We did Hot 97, 105 for like a year straight with mm -hmm. DJ Self and Flex and Drewski. And, and it just didn't work. The mm -hmm. record just didn't... It, 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 I think it peaked at like 98 on the charts or some mm -hmm. shit like that, but it didn't go all the way through. It didn't do what it was supposed to do, and I ran out of money. I spent $250,000 in like a year. 250 250 Wow. About about 50, 50 a month, something like that. In the business and stuff? Yeah, it was a lot. Wow, it was okay. A lot of money. It was yeah, a lot, it, was a, it, was a, it was a lot of mortgages I paid for people. <laughs> wow. But you know what? That was my college. That was, it was, you know, you get a Harvard degree, what it costs. Yeah, well, right? so yeah, that's yeah. what I paid for, right? So yeah. I, I could, I could, I, now I'm seasoned in entertainment. Mm -hmm. I have an artist right now. His name is Scotchy Boss. He's on Hot 97, 105. You know, he's in, he got one of the biggest records in Jamaica right now. He got a, a, a feature with Tommy Lee Sparta that's going crazy right now. So you, so you're, so this is cool to hear. So you're still managing at the same time of doing production, yes. and film, and everything. Yes, so but it has to be a specific artist. Yeah. It but you're multi-talented then in that sense then. So we got to keep getting into this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you're still managing currently. I took, I took a break off for about seven years. Of managing? Um, of managing. Working on film? Working on films. Okay. So this is, I just shot my 15th feature film. Incredible. With um, Nile and Gravy and Halito from The Wire, Miko Cartuso from Euphoria, Maddie Tosca. And is that your brother, Matty? That's my brother. And oh, he excellent. actually writes my scripts, too. Really? So when he when the music didn't really work, to mm -hmm. it, it worked, but it didn't do what we wanted it to do. Mm -hmm. I was shooting movies, and the scripts was whack. Mm. At that time. <laughs> the, the people that I was getting hired to do things, and mm -hmm. my, my the, 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 the wheel was turning. Mm -hmm. Two beat, he was getting money, and I'm like, yo, bro, you could write a script for me. He's like, nah, I can't do that. And why did you... Why did you think of him to write a script? Was it because he was a good songwriter? Because he was he was a really good writer. Period. period. Okay. Like in school, he would be gotcha. foreshadowing and doing all the things that great writers do. Yeah. So I knew he could once he put it in the right format. Yes. He would be able to do it. Excellent. And he's this is his my fifteenth feature film is his fifth movie. One of the is his fifth movie we shot. Oh, that's incredible. So that's pretty cool. And I, I gotta ask you here, um, how important is it for you to work with family? Because I see, I love that you're working with your brother. So how important is that for you to build with family? It's not important. It's not important. It used to be important, mm -hmm. but now it's I don't need that validation from family. Gotcha. You know but you work with your brother for so, us. That time. relationship is important. That, that's what you know I want to say. That's me what me I'm and his about. relationship is. I can get that. We're totally. picking in the brain. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we, that's that's that relationship is is, yeah. That's most. I important. I can identify with that having a brother. Like I'm super close to my brother. Yeah. Like that is my he's my immediate brother, my only brother, no sisters, and so I'm super close with him. So I can get that immediate yeah, we're, we're family. We're one year apart. Like I'm, you know. So oh okay. Forty forty one. Oh, wow. So me and my brother, my brother and I were two years apart, so I'm the big sister. But so let's finish building on. So you working with your brother. He's the one that is writing the scripts for the films that you're, mm -hmm, you're, mm -hmm. you're doing. But wait a second. Before we jump in there, you haven't took me into you writing the first film. And what was that so, like? So let's go back. So yes. did the video with Seth. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't take off. I stopped. What year was that with Seth? Oh, God. Uh, two thousand and. Nine. Oh, that's wow! Over ten years. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So years go by. Um, 2012, 13, something like that. Uh, this was at post military, mm -hmm. and with my wife that I'm with now, which mm -hmm. was 
10 years ago though so this is now i'm, I'm like maybe 30 at right? that time at that time okay and I think my son came into the room and he wanted something from me and I didn't have the money for it. I, I think I might have been stacking vacuums in a factory. I had went to the, one of those staffing agencies and I was stacking vacuums in in a, in a factory for like $300 a week. And he asked me for something and I couldn't get it. Mm. And I looked real like sad. And mm -hmm. she came in the room and she was like, Yo, what's the matter? Like, like what's up? Like, what's good? Mm -hmm. I'm like, nah, I'm good. And she's like, nah, something's wrong. So she, I told her what was wrong. Mm -hmm. She pulled out her little phone and she ordered the whatever it was. I think it was some shit he wanted. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Something that he wanted and she ordered it. Mm -hmm. Boom. She just mm -hmm. ordered it. And I was like, wow, that was pretty cool. And then she turns around and she says, you know what you should do? I'm like, what? <laughs> she goes, you should use the camera. You're really good at it. Wow. I said, really? Wow. Me? She goes, yeah. <laughs> Walks out. Right? Your wife. My wife. At okay. the time, girlfriend. Oh, okay. I pull out. I get to the computer. I go to the desk. And this is exactly what I said. I said, if anybody wants a video, holler at me. <laughs> Send on Facebook. Bang. Boop. Shortly after that, same day. I mean, I think this was a Friday. Yeah, this was a Friday. And the lady... She wanted, she hit me up in my inbox and she asked me if I could film her fashion show. Mm. And I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. She's like, I need you to see if you could do it. This, this guy canceled on me. <laughs> I got a budget of $500. Oh, wow. Do you have PayPal? Mm -hmm. I'm like, no. She's like, create one so I could send you the money now to lock you in. She didn't see no work or nothing. And I still wasn't really stuck on the money because mm -hmm. I knew I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Really? That's why I'm saying you saying I'm good at this and I don't even know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Right? So I go. I do it. She sends me the money. Now I'm sitting there like, oh, <laughs> shh, yo, this lady just sent me $500. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, oh. But I'm more, I'm more nervous about me not doing the job correctly i was gonna ask you did you feel like stuck like as what am i gonna do did you yeah have i had no clue no i oh, had one wow. lens i had a canon 7d it was a 50 millimeter lens that was way too close to do what i needed to do mm. i jacked it up it was, mm -hmm. I, I messed it up mm -hmm. she, st and she still paid me and she still loved me and she's hired me again to do something else mm -hmm. but that day i went there there was a dozen photographers and film people there Mm -hmm. And they was looking at the camera I had, and it was old. They was laughing at it, and it was younger kids. Mm -hmm. And they was like, but, and I was like, so tell me what to get. Mm -hmm. So I, I said, tell me what to get so I could get it. Mm -hmm. So I took the kid's number. He texted me. He told me what to get. I went home. It was like maybe I went to the computer to search it on B and H, and it was like thirteen thousand dollars. Wow. So mm -hmm. I sold everything I had to get that. Right. That's I, investing in yourself. Everything that I had, my games, everything, whatever I had, I could get. I, I, I sold. You sold it, and to I really, get that. and I didn't have enough. I had to ask every family member I had to, that I was going to do that, and I, nobody had the money. I, I need people to hear you. I hope they, they, if they did not hear you, you said the camera was thirteen thousand dollars, and the, in the, order to get it, yeah, everything. The, it was the camera. It was the drone. It was lenses. It was memory. It was just a bunch of stuff I knew nothing about. Uh -huh. He told me to get these things, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna get them, and. I'm going to go to YouTube and figure out what to do after I get them. You knew the importance of investing in yourself, though. You knew that yes. if I made this move, this was going to change my life. I didn't think about that like you that. You didn't at the time, that deep. I didn't. I just knew Maybe that. Maybe something inside of you knew. because Something inside of me knew that I needed to figure out how to get this amount of money up. Because if I start here... See, that's, I, I, I'll have a good starting point. You and knew something. I, I need to get this money. So I asked everybody I, I knew. Everybody told and me And you no. said you sold everything that you could. Like my, my, my games, my, my, my old sneak. Whatever I had that was of worth, I sold it. Wow. Like straight up. I think I got like some low number, like $2,000 or something like that. And I went to my dad and my dad was like, he, he, he he's an older man. My dad had me kind of old. So he's old. He's like, yo, what are you going to do? I'm like, I'm going to be a cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> he's like you're gonna be a cameraman <laughs> what <laughs> like everything you do you quit music this that you're gonna be a cameraman 
was like, how much money you need? I'm like, I need $13,000. He's like, all right, let's go to the bank. I'm going to give it to you. Wow. But this is it. After this, like, you messed this up. I'm done. If you don't give me this money back in six months, that's it. Because mm-hmm. I don't have no more money. This is all I have. Wow. I'm, your going, I'm, go, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it to you. Yes. And I walked out of there. Like, we went to the bank. He gave it to me. I went to this. This was, like, all in that same week. Mm-hmm. Like, it was all in that same time. I went home. I remember getting the boxes, going home, sitting there. Like, I don't know what to do. But I'm going to go on YouTube. I went on YouTube. God bless the people on YouTube. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. sit there and explain everything setting for setting exactly how you need it. Mm-hmm. Like lay it out for you. God, yes. God bless those people. God bless those. Before you go into that, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Bet. The new, the new, new Harvey 1019. New York's number one for throwbacks. Yeah. LA Key, this is my story. If you can relate, vibe to it. Waited my whole life, waited my whole life. Yeah, come on. I've been waiting. Without stressing, just confessing It's been painful yet beautiful The pursuit to happiness Maneuvering through the madness Fighting through the sadness Grinding, chasing my dreams Make it by any means From the ground low Grinding all I know Made it out the snow Determined to grow Got it out the mud Hustle hard in my blood When it rained, LA key flood Everybody can't go You hating on the low Cut them, they ain't want me to grow Keep the grass cut low I can see the snakes I know the real from the fake My heart pure, no hate Superstardom is my only fate Let's cut the cake It's time to celebrate My time is now, it's been worth the wait My time is now, it's been worth the wait Opportunity. You know. Can't stop what's meant for me Never. You heard the prophecy, it's mine, it's my destiny it's mine. I was off it for a minute, Can't now I'm back more committed The music and I reunited My childhood passion, I go hard, feel my passion Many prayed it wouldn't happen We would sit laughing, we laughing at you haters Delay but not deny. many nights I pondered why But God heard my cry, now we planning trips to Dubai Santorini, Greece, it's my treat, it's all on me same ones they talked about with no degree is a mastermind you agree from the bottom building this empire i spit fire making my living in entertainment long money check my statement it's been long awaited waited my whole life to say mama we made it Throwing it back. The new Party 1019. New York's number one for throwbacks. On LA in the afternoon, Party 101.9 and Nexus Radio. If you have not been listening, we are actually getting the great story of um I, I don't know what to call you. I, I I guess like a multi-talent, multi-talented um what do I say? Music management, but his name is I just true. Do whatever. Yeah. I just do whatever it takes to get it done. Yes. Whatever that is. Everything. He from film to music, you name it. So before we close out, you were talking about shouting out the people on YouTube for 
what they do. Can yes. we continue into yes. that story? They, they helped me grow. You know what's funny is I, I actually grew with a lot of those YouTubers. Mm. Um, I watched them actually make millions of dollars now from their YouTube channel. Wow. Crazy, a whole different game. I'm about to start vlogging too and start breaking down equipment and it's nerdy tech stuff, but I'm about to start doing it. But yeah, anyway, good. I did that and went and and I did about 400 music videos for free that year. Oh wow, 400? About 400. Wow. And what happened from that, and I didn't even know, mm. is I was doing marketing and promotion, mm -hmm. a lot of it, because every time somebody's posting a video, they tag you. And they're stuff. tagging me. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about that. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get good. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get so good. Wow. I was turning down money saying, nah, bro, let me just shoot it. Wow, I respect that. Because I was trying to get good. Perfecting your craft. I was trying to perfect my mm -hmm. craft and know exactly what the camera does, why it shoots when you mm. push it, what happens inside. And from inside, like if I took it apart, mm -hmm. I'll be able to put it back together. Oh, I respect so that. that. That's how I, I, I did that, right? But then I got lucky. Right place, right time. I met this kid named DJ J Hood. Jersey Club King, um, he was, at that time, he was, he had just got up with Fetty Wap. Like maybe, I got with him maybe six months before that. Mm -hmm. And I asked him to do his video. And he was like, all right, cool, when you want to do it? I said, today. He said, like, right now? I said, right now. Mm -hmm. I shoot the video and I had it edited the next day, 12 o'clock. It was done. He couldn't believe it. His mind was smoked wow he couldn't he just couldn't believe it mm -hmm. he was like the whole video is done it's edited the storyline it's colored it's done mm -hmm. his mom was blown so we went ahead and did like maybe 30 videos we just started shooting and one day he called me like yo i got this fetty wap video um he he's he's on the rooftop he's coming from dubai we gotta go now it's four in the morning mm -hmm. i'm like all right all right, you know what? Let's go. Mm -hmm. We get up. I go over there. I wait for this guy. This guy takes forever to come. He finally <laughs> comes. And he came with a bag of money. Shout out to Fetty Wap. <clears throat> but coming to Dubai with a big bag of money and giving us some, like, it was... This was, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. It was when them records was out. <laughs> so he was he had the bag, like literally had the bag on him. <laughs> he was like, how much money y'all got? Y'all got money? We <laughs> like, nah. He like, yo, ho, give me the bag, son. <laughs> it's like a, million, like a million, it was mad money. He just gave us money. So shout out to Fetty Wap. Wow. So gave us money. He said, anybody ask y'all, I'll tell y'all I paid y'all. So shout out to Fetty Wap. He paid <laughs> him. He definitely paid us some, some racks that day. Wow. Like racked up everybody. Like super super official. I walked out of the day with like two thousand dollars in my pocket. Wow. Cash, all blue hundreds. And at this point, you you've already done these four hundred videos for free, so you you're knowing your stuff at this point. Yeah, I'm confident. Yeah. I was nervous that day. It was my first celebrity Cele yeah. It was my first celebrity video thing I ever did. Mm hmm Do that. He posted it. His label posted it. RGF posted it. Everybody posted it. Wow. That day I had posted it. I went to sleep. I woke up. I had a hundred plus requests. And each comment, each DM said, how much is a video? 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 How much you charge? How much you charge? How much is a video? Video, video, charge, charge. Where you from? Where you from? Where you charge? It was going crazy. It was going crazy. Wow. And that, that was, that was my birth right there. That moment. That moment was, was it. Powerful. That moment was like, all right, there's no turning back from this moment. I can't stop it if I wanted to. I'm booked every six months ahead of time. It's like it's, it was rolling mm -hmm. at that point. At mm -hmm. that point, it was just... just it was rolling. It, it took it a life of its own. There. Doing all of that marketing promotion that I didn't even know I was doing. Mm -hmm. it's like by now, I'm probably over 1,200 videos. Wow. Easily. Yeah. But doing all of that up until that point... It just, it was a snowball effect. Mm. It was, it just took a life of its own. Mm -hmm. It took a life of its own. So what, so at this point you're shooting for Fetty Wap and are you shooting for other celebrities and entertainers um, at that point? Not yet. It was just, it went from like, all right, so, so let's say you do a beat for a big artist and it goes crazy and everyone knows about it, right? Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of little artists that's going to try to get to you. So what yes. happened was... 
I got that one big artist, and then it was like 4,000 other artists that I was getting a ton of money from, from probably a bunch of artists who's probably not going to ever make it. But yeah, it was a lot of money. It was like cash money. So, yeah. <laughs> and then it took a while after that. I think the next person was Rich the Kid, and then Lou got cash, and then... It just took a life of its own. It was mm. like a lot of people. Then I was doing my favorite rappers. I, I was like, oh, this is crazy. Like mm-hmm. M.O.P., uh, Jim Jones, uh, Billy Dollars. Who else? Uh, Six Nine. Wow. Uh, I just did Scarlet's video. Oh, really? Um, the one that went viral, and I knew that video was. What, and I, what I, song is that? Is that song that? Back the. That one. Oh, you did that one. Yeah, I, I knew the song that the first song that got her viral. Yeah, I, I'm telling you something. I knew that. So I did this J.R. Prince in New York. I did all of his videos before he got before he got big. Mm-hmm. Smooth L. I did all of his videos before he got big. These guys like, yo, I'm gonna take you with me. I'm, I'm calling y'all out because y'all ain't taking me with y'all. Y'all went in to go get millions of dollars and wow. to get these looks. But I did these videos on the arm. They didn't have no bread. They didn't have the bread. Right. So I'm looking out at this point because I was worth the money. Mm-hmm. And we do all these videos. Now you get looks. And then it's like, you get a deal now. I put you, I kind of like put you in, in a crazy position. Mm-hmm. And then they just go and do what they do. But I did I did that with a, a bunch of kids. That's wow. why I kind of got like, stopped doing favors. Yeah, I, I could understand that. Yeah, I stopped, stopped doing favors because they, they don't pay it back. They don't, they don't even give, you know what, they can't. Mm. That's the thing is that you mm-hmm. sign a contract, you really don't even know what you signed. And... You can't go get the the your the guy that is not with Sony or Epic and don't have those credentials, mm-hmm. right? Oh, I'm not in the union, so I'm not working with those companies. We have to be in the union sometimes to get those jobs. When you say union, are you talking about Film. SAG after? Yeah, like yeah, to get okay. that right. And yeah. it's not SAG after. It's I think it's something else it's called. It's called something else. But they would only like the last video she did. Who? I, Scarlet, uh-huh. the very, very last one, Blick, I was supposed to do that video. Mm. But they went with the one of the people they were familiar with at that work at the label. Oh, okay. Yeah. To, gotcha. re- to really just take the money. And when you shot for her, <laughs> she wasn't signed at that time? No. Okay. But I knew she was going to get, I knew that was what happened. I knew exactly, when I got to, I didn't even hear the song. Mm-hmm. When I got there, she looked super crazy. Shout out to Scarlett because she didn't even give. She didn't. That was what I think people liked about her. Mm-hmm. I think whatever the label did now, <laughs> they don't. That's not the, the lipstick and the, and the clothes yeah. and all. That's not it. Yeah. It was the rawness. That, and that's what people really identify with that authenticity. It was the Who rawness. You are. You, when you be yourself, they love you, and then the labels kind of take you kind away of from that. It. When that song yeah. came on, she scared me, y'all. <laughs> No, she scared me. Literally, huh? It, I, 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 I was like, whoa. Yeah. I felt that. I felt that. And I did so many artists that you could. I f- could literally feel the energy. Mm. It was high. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The people that were behind her doing that that video that day. You look at the energy. That was just pure. They were. They were excited for her. Mm-hmm. They were happy. Oh, I love to hear that. It was like really high energy. Mm-hmm. She was like, "Give me your jacket." Give me your shirt. Give me those pants. These were her fans from TikTok, and they gave it to her. Mm. They gave it to her. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Wow, okay, that's <laughs> okay." She got fans, <laughs> and I knew I went home like, "Yo, babe, I just shot this girl named Scarlett. Yo, she's gonna blow. This shit is crazy." And that was last year, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was. I was. I was really like, "Wow," but those moments I've I've I experienced it because I, I did a couple of artists that was six nine was huge. Mm-hmm. He was huge. Those videos outside, the energy with the people, it's it's uncontrollable. Mm-hmm. It's uncontrollable. Yeah. And let's go back to you. So you're shooting all these videos. So when did that love and passion for film grow for you? What was the first project you worked on? Uh, for film? I always liked film as far as movies and narratives go. Mm-hmm. Um my first project was called, well, I shot dozens of projects, because I act myself. So I shot dozens of projects, like, by myself. Okay. Like, just me as the actor. Like, solo films. Like, they're really? on YouTube still. You can look okay. them up. And I just, from that, um, 
I wanted to do short films. So I did nine short films called Frenemies. Oh, wow. So and what I, you did? You did nine of that same, under that same title? Yeah. So part one? So or part, was, like, what was that? It was like, uh, uh, how you call it? Uh, short story. So I did, it, it would be like a book of, let's say a book of short stories. Mm -hmm. So this would be a book of short films. Okay. Titled Frenemies. Okay. In different situations where your friend would screw you over. Oh, okay. Right? So mm -hmm. we shot that and we put them all together. Mm -hmm. Because Tubi, at that time, stopped taking short films. Okay. So I was like, right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make chapters, chapter one. <laughs> this one, this one, this one. They don't yeah. they don't connect, though. There's not... So Tubi and now, wait a second, how what how long ago was this? Because like, I'm just now getting really familiar with Tubi. That was not. a while ago. That was my first thing on Tubi. That might have been f five years ago. So you've been doing Tubi films. That was my first one. I did that one with Damon Dash. Oh, wow. I did that one with Damon Dash. Five years ago. Yeah. So that's giving me some Tubi uh, information. Tubi's eight years. Okay. Yeah, but they just got bought by Fox. So really? that's why you see the change. And where, what is that the change with like the, the movies that have been out? Just marketing promotion. Production? Oh, okay. Marketing promotion. They, have, they got Super Bowl commercials. Yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? You, when you have Super Bowl commercials, mm -hmm. you, you, you get, people going to download this app. Mm -hmm. They're number three in entertainment on apps. Oh, wow. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, that is insane. Yeah. So at this point, so you're on, you're doing Tubi films, your short films. Are I didn't know here? what it was, though. Like, yeah, I didn't okay. really understand that it was going to be what it's going to be now. Yeah. But yeah, we did that, saw some revenue, and I just kept going. Mm -hmm. But before that, I had shot other people's films. That was my first feature. That was my first film. I had With shot you other acting films. In yeah. It. Okay. No, not acting in. I wasn't acting in that one. I was. Oh. That was just me, with uh, different actors. I had hired actors, and I had a sound okay. man. I had a small skeleton crew, and we went and shot nine shorts. Mm -hmm. When it was time to distribute it, nobody would distribute it because it was short film. So we just put them together as one film. Oh, okay. So then it did come together. It's still as on one. Tubi. You could actually see it right now. Oh, I'm gonna have to check it out. It's called Friend of Me's. I got. Yeah. I got maybe seven, seven things on Tubi right now, currently right now. To, to check out. Okay, yeah, yeah. can you do you mind to name some of your films so that the people that are at home that are I want to I want to promote the Pale White Horse because the Pale White Horse is viral right okay. now. Um, the Pale White Horse is on Cineverse. Mm -hmm. It's not on Tubi yet. Okay, it's on the Cineverse app by Fubu, the mm -hmm. Fubu Network. Um, it's a new app, mm -hmm. uh, but it's free. It's just like Tubi, it's in the TVs. It's mm -hmm. called Cineverse, C I N E V E R S E. And um, it's starring Halito from The Wire. Uh, Bodie from The Wire is in there as well. Mm -hmm. um, Miko's in there. Erica Jean from Love and Hip Hop. And it's called The Pale White Horse. That, that movie mm -hmm. is a beautiful movie. Okay. It is just really good. It's what about, is the movie about? It's about a game about uh, life and death. Okay. And it's Squid Game vibes. Mm -hmm. So pass me my phone. They calling it the Hood Squid Games. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to send this to you right quick. But they calling it the Hood Squid Games, mm -hmm. and it's pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So yes. So yes. It's, it's it's they're playing the game. Okay. People are dying. You're getting your eyeball ripped out. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's it the hood squid crazy. games. It's the, the hood squid games. Oh my god. The pale so you white guys horse. Have the hood. We gotta get back. In, we're gonna get back into that. We're gonna take a quick commercial break, <laughs> break and we're gonna get more into the pale this, white horse. Yes, the pale white horse. If you can't read all your 
a natural feeling I'm higher than the ceiling Beautiful, so appealing It's that spiritual healing Nothing better than working on self and healing Becoming my highest version Can't deny I've been chosen Set us hard, always been a loner No pun intended, never been a stoner Always been obsessed with going further Levitating, educating my mind Elevating, never been one for the hating Wisdom and knowledge is power Expand your mind and be empowered Let's go higher, higher. It's that high vibration Self-motivation Self-transformation Self-liberation Pure inspiration Daily medication No discrimination This is that high frequency music It's so therapeutic I came back to the music To show them what to do with it We grinding and we building Stacking, making millions Lakeithia Nicole is a brand name Putting you on game Share it with your children, children legacy, It's feeling deeper legacy, than the legacy. internet On replay, in your subconscious never, You will never forget never. I got a solution, yes. this is the resolution yes. Inspire the evolution Yes, yes Beautiful feeling when you're feeling blessed If you can't read all your literate That feeling bigger than the internet When it comes to faith, you know we more than generous Music for your soul every time you hear us your spirit heavenly melodies every time you hear it you ain't gotta act when you know you're gifted where I'm from, we don't fear giants. We don't fear em. Welcome to the land of the Titans. Welcome, welcome. All black S is my stallion. Heard it's 10.2 for private islands. We in too deep entrepreneuring. I just want credit for what I'm doing. Kingpin, my words come from the future. From the future. The ink is the blood spilled from the shooting. the shooting. My brain is the shooter, but it's so conducive. So conducive. The greatest music for the biggest losers. Biggest losers. New Beretta like a bow and for my people, we don't work for Pharaoh. No, no, no. Gotta love when that feeling sound like pianos. Woo. You don't want that sound to go soprano. Forgive me, God, you know no, I'm a sinner. Forgive me, God. Forgive, forgive me God. for my sins. Bless me with this dinner. Bless me. Faith kept me warm in the coldest winters. Learn how to read love. You know she come in letters. That eagle that protector never had a feather. No, Unless you talking about the pressure when you pull the trigger. Wah! They Wah! look at you different when you paint a picture. Uh -huh. Created my own meaning for my signature. You know that. Kingpin, this forever literature. Woo! Woo! Yeah, this forever literature. Forever. Beautiful feeling when you're feeling blessed. If you can't read love, you're illiterate. That feeling bigger than the internet. When it comes to faith, you know we more than generous. If you are just joining us, I am speaking with True, and we're talking about this film that he has. That listen, let's finish up telling them about this film. The Pale White Horse. Yes. The Pale yes. White Horse is just a movie that's gonna have you on the edge of your seat from the beginning to the end. You're gonna love it. If you love thrillers, yes, I you, love if thrillers. You, <laughs> if you love plot twist, yeah. If you love something, a movies where because my thing with movies is. Is if I can, she about to fall. Yeah, you about to die. They about to get out the car and kill you. Watch out. <laughs> if I can do that. Yeah. Oh, she's cheating. Yeah, she's cheating with the da da da. And they about to, you know how you watch a movie. You about you call it you, out. Everything. Once that happens, uh -huh. I'm I'm done. You kind of tune out. Right, at so that we point. we try to make the movies to where you don't know what's gonna happen. You think you know. Okay. But you don't. know. But you don't know. You like oh that's, that's what. In this movie, okay. you have to watch twice. Okay. Once, because if you're a movie watcher. And you're watching every single detail of the movie, mm -hmm. then this particular movie you would have to watch twice because wow. there's certain things that happen that you're like, wait a minute, hold up. Mm -hmm. So the gun was, the gun never had no bullets in the box. Wow. Certain <laughs> things like you know what I'm saying. Wow. Okay. It gets into an argument with somebody and it, it you know, and it doesn't work, but. Mm -hmm. And it, his his task was to put the gun there, and his task was to get the gun. But the gun never had no bullets in it from the beginning, so oh, you wow. you were never gonna kill nobody with that gun. So it was kind of set up for you to fail. 
So little, small things like that is all throughout of it. Wow. And his friends setting them up. It's just a bunch of things that go down. It's crazy. So you're it's, saying you're not guessing these movies right here. No, you're, you're not, not guessing these <laughs> okay. movies. Even, even Will You Marry Me is... It's, it's a tragic ending. Okay. It's a love. Sto- it's a. It's an urban love story. Mm-hmm. It's inspired by hip hop. Um, it's based off the song. Uh, I can't believe I just dumped this out of my brain. And Undying you- Love by Nas. Oh, that's what the movie is based off. of. Will you marry me? Is based ah. off Undying Love by Nas. The story in that mm-hmm. is the story of Will You Marry Me, but what happened before the three minutes of song time. Oh, so okay. it's an hour and twenty minutes of actual film. Uh huh. So we took the the three minutes that was pretty much of their record and put that at the end, mm-hmm. and then wrote previous to that ending, which really? is it's masterfully amazing. Wow, what inspired you guys to do it off of Nas's song that, and make that a movie? Well, we had the idea of doing that with songs that never had videos that were really good stories like Biggie mm-hmm. song I look deeper I see blood up on your sneakers is you creeping or seeking he tells me see rock just got hit up at the beak that's a movie mm. you can shoot that do you rap too cuz that, that no, my, sounded my, good to me though <laughs> my brother raps okay. I don't rap okay <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah so you can shoot that biggie mm-hmm. was writing novels stories really yes. telling stories okay. yes yeah. somebody got to die uh ninjas bleed those were, I got a story to tell. Those are movies. Those mm-hmm. are motion pictures. Mm-hmm. Ninja's Bleed is a motion picture. Mm-hmm. So that's what we, we, we did that. Um, and that's then creative. That Irv Gotti did Tales, so we wasn't going to do it. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, Irv, I don't, like the, I don't really like the way you did Tales. So I got to kind of show you how to do this thing. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's, that's the competition to me. I, and I got to say, I think it's creative the way that you guys go in and you take these hip hop songs, the ones that like you said never had movies and create your own movies yes. based off Full of those storylines. Feature lines. film. Feature film. And look, I'm in the middle of shooting and sometimes things get changed on set mm-hmm. script wise or whatever. But I'm saying no 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 no. You cannot change this. <laughs> because it's I said, hold up, stop. I gotta play it for y'all. Mm-hmm. So that y'all can hear the record and understand why we can't change this. I love that. We can't change it. We got to stick to what was in that record. Mm -hmm. He comes in the crib. He hears the music. He smells the weed. The incense is burning. He sees the champagne bottles, his lipstick there. He sees the guy's boots. He sees his jacket. He goes upstairs. He peeks through. He sees her rubbing him. She's rubbing him. All of that had to be seen the way Nas wrote that part. Mm -hmm. When they see this movie, Mm -hmm. oh, my God. Gravy, Gravy's a... Shout out to Gravy, Jamal Woolard. He's a stellar actor. He cried on camera several times. He cried off camera several times just to practice crying. He's amazing. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to keep it real. People talk about Tubi this and Tubi that, mm-hmm. Tubi King, Tubi whatever. Mm-hmm. Gravy is amazing. Mm-hmm. Bottom line. They said he, he has so many films on up there right now. He is amazing. And shout out to Halito McCullen, too, from the Y. He's, he's amazing as well. He's a pretty uh, dope actor. I love that. Listen, you know how you talk to me, and we were talking in the beginning about you getting that love. I can see that you light up when you talk about, you know, film at oh, this yes, point. That's my passion. Yes, that's my passion. <laughs> it, it, it's dopamine it. for me. Mm. I, I, that's part of my book. Um, I have a book coming out it's probably in the end of the summer. But part, okay. one of the chapters is about dopamine, and you can create that in your brain with anything. You just got to get past the hard part. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? What like, is your book about? My story, how I do what I do, how I'm an entrepreneur for 10 years without ever having to work a job, how I have residual income doing this, how I didn't go to school to do this. It's about that. Wow. It's about... It's about I like how you... Ca- so you're going to give them the insight on the, in this book. Because everybody, people always ask me. And I, I, you know... I have a school. I have a film school that I teach kids, an eight-week course of film. I have my own program I run. So all of that is going to be in there and how I do it and what motivates me to do it and, and things and like that. Who are some of your inspirations for film? Like like some of your, you know. You know what's crazy? Um, a lot of my inspirations for film, I don't even know their names. Mm-hmm. But it's like specific movies. Um, you ever heard of a movie called Memento? I don't think so. I don't know if I know it. Like I was telling Swerve one time, I don't know names or some movies I don't remember. But that, so. that director. Okay. The person that directed Memento, I forgot his name, but mm-hmm. he's pretty much the person that 
invented the shooting out of order. Okay. He didn't invent it, but he used it early in the game. And mm-hmm. then Martin Scorsese. I was going to ask you about genius. him. Yes, genius. Yes, that's the guy I wanted to ask you about. Genius. Uh, yeah. He made me take acting classes mm. because it taught me, because what he said was, that's how he, that's how he started in film. Mm. But it allowed him, once he went to the other side, mm-hmm. to understand where the actor's coming from. Mm-hmm. and how to g- g- deliver information to them on how they need to be. Mm-hmm. And the only way you can really do that is if you step to the other side. Other side, So that's right. why I said, let me take some acting classes and really learn, yeah. let me be a student of the game a student, yeah. on that side of the field. Mm-hmm. To, to maybe, you know, because directing is all how you talk, how you articulate. Um, you can't say to the actor, I need you to give me a bigger performance. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. It means you to give me more. You got to be able to explain more of what. Because mm-hmm. so, that could be so anything, You right? could be anything, right? There's mm-hmm. a choice. When you're acting, there's always a choice. You could choose to yell the phrase. It could be Bob says, Bob's angry. Bob says, get the hell out of here. So now how I deliver that line could be, get the hell out of here. Or I could say, get the hell out of here. It's choices, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. you have to give them an opportunity to understand the motivation behind the choice mm-hmm. on what's the scene before this mm-hmm. and then tell them how you want them to do it and be specific or else they're going to choose a good actor doesn't need me to do that they're going right. to they're going to interpret the role the character they're going to mm-hmm. put in their even if I don't give them any backstory yeah. they're going to they're going to create it they're going to create I was just they, they're, they're going to create, create motivation their own. they're going to yeah. create but that's good and bad because if you're looking for something specific Sometimes. then you need to reiterate what you're looking for, so yeah. then they can take that and mm-hmm. go with that. Mm-hmm. Well, good actors are gonna choose. They're gonna choose. They're gonna choose by themselves. Yeah. And do you like that when actors come to you when when you give them the script? Like you said, it could be good and bad. But do you like that they've already created that storyline and that trajectory of who that art that 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 character I, is? I don't like it if they're not able to easily drop it. Because oh, if okay. you if you created this, yes. But if this is not this person, mm-hmm. you gotta be able to let that go. You gotta be able to let that go. And step into now, the if it is the person, yeah, and it does work, then it works. Right? Then it works. Yes. But if it don't work, then you gotta let it go and move you, on. You gotta and, be and able to relate a you, whole new. You gotta be able character. to let it go and deliver what I'm what I'm saying, and then meet me in the middle and put your spice on there. Yeah. Put your, I don't mind that at all because mm-hmm. I need you to deliver it comfortably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For those that are like looking up to get into the position that you're in right now you know you're wearing multiple hats from music to the not and I'm, I'm not putting music first but the film is first and then the music right um what would you give an upcoming uh direct uh inspiring director um like you do you're the dp and you're you also listen i forgot all the hats you wear with this but Fairway horse i edited it edited it colored it and everything I sent it out, every did it See, all i'm saying so did what would all. you give uh, a talent that is in, inspired and wants to do what it is that you do what information would you give them where would they start shooting every day going home and editing it and going back outside the next day and shooting again and one of the things <laughs> that you said you did was you weren't looking for money at that point no you were going after the like i said to um hone your gift that are because this is what happened to me very early I was put in a couple of situations, nighttime, low light, <laughs> uh, just different situations, mm-hmm. rainy, just whatever. Yeah. And I quickly realized, I said, wait a minute, I need to run a lot of laps so I could be in every situation possible so when it comes, I know how to deal with it. Mm-hmm. So that's what I, that's, that was my motivation for wanting to do as much as I possibly could. I was literally shooting every day, going home, putting the footage in there, going back on YouTube, trying to get the image the way I needed it. Mm -hmm. And the only way you could do that is if you understand the camera back and front Mm -hmm. and what the the buttons are on it. There's only three things that control the cameras, ISO, shutter speed, and the F-stop or the T-stop. Those three things are on every camera. Mm If you know how to use those three things and know what they change on the camera, mm-hmm. you can work any camera. Amazing. And listen, shout out to your wife because 
part of you being here today and talking it's with us her. is because of her. She's hit my whole existence right now. True life. I wouldn't be doing any of this. I'd be great, but I wouldn't be this. She great. saw in you what you didn't see in yourself, right? She, she did. I did not think or see that I would be doing this at all. And look at how far you've come with her belief and telling you to go out there, get that camera, and then this is where you are today. For those that don't know, give them where they can find you on all social media and what to look out for, um, what you're currently working on and okay, what to cool. look out for. All right, so True Life Films, uh, everything is common spelling except for True. True is no E, so it's T-R-U-L-I-G-H-T-F-I-L-M-S. True Life Films on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, IMDB is Adrian True Toscano. You can see all my movies. Um, we got the Supreme documentary coming out with executive produced by Irv Gotti and Mike Tyson. Um, that's a documentary that uh, Supreme Kenneth McGriff, he's telling his story from prison. It's the official Supreme documentary. Um, the, the Rock Nation uh, Foundation documentary with Jay-Z and Jay-Z's mother. Uh, that's also coming out end of the summer. Wow. And we got Will You Marry Me with uh, Gravy and Nia Lee. That's my 15th feature film that I've shot and edited, um, my my sixth one of my own, um, and that should be coming out probably, I want to say June. Incredible. Well, true, thank and you And the so Pale much. White Horse is out right now. Yes. Don't, for, don't forget about and the Pale White network? Horse. We trending. And what network is it on? It's on Sinverse, C-I-N-E-V-E-R-S-E, -E -E, Sinverse. It's totally free. Pale the Pale White, White Horse. You guys got to go check it out. Thank you so much, True, for coming by. Thank you for all of this wisdom and just sharing your story with us. I really appreciate you. Thank you guys for tuning in to LA Key in the afternoon. You guys have a great rest of your day. We will see you guys again soon. You found the new Party 1019, New York's number one for throwbacks.